Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today I'm putting together a hand tie cascading bouquet using all white flowers. And as always, I start off with prepping my flowers by separating stems, removing leaves, and removing any tags. I'm gonna shorten the stems that are too long and I'm gonna elongate the stems that are too short. And as you see here with this hydrangea leaf, I used a medium gauge wire and I'm covering up the wire with my wax floral tape. That way the secrets are kept safe and nobody gets poked. And I will put a link in the description leading to where I purchased those items on Amazon. So I have some hydrangea, some roses, some ranunculus, and uh, some orchids and a little bit of greenery. And if you haven't had a chance to, if you could please like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you to those who have. I'm trying to put out content at least once a week, trying to keep um, different ideas, uh, new trends, tips and tricks. And uh, hopefully everybody will be able to learn from them. Also, if you get a chance to check out my website at orlandorose.com, I have some blogs on there. Also, if you're interested in what it would cost for me to create your floral bouquet using artificial flowers. There's a form there to fill out. I'm happy to give you that free estimate. Um, so I have here uh, the greenery and I, instead of using the traditional ivy uh, that has that nice kind of uh, flowy feel to it, I was lucky enough to find this interesting greenery. I'm not sure what it is, but I found it on Hobby Lo or at Hobby Lobby and I thought it would look nicer with the orchids. Um, since it, the orchids are a little bit more of a tropical flower. And to start off with assembling the bouquet, I am using kind of like a base. I'm, I'm almost putting together kind of a base there um, so that I can keep that rounded shape but still allow it to dip down into a teardrop. Since my hands are very weak, <laughs> I tied that off. That way I have that nice foundation that's not going to release. And from there on out, I'm just uh, adding my flowers. And what's nice about using one color, whether it be white, you can use black, green, blue, red, pink, whatever, by using a monochromatic color scheme, you eliminate having to uh, distribute the colors evenly throughout the bouquet. So instead of keeping that in the back of your mind, oh my gosh, I can't put this flower here because it doesn't look good next to that flower or there's too much red on one side and too much pink on the other. Because I have this monochromatic color scheme, all I have to worry about is shape and texture. So I, I don't want to group my ranunculus all together. I want those to be distributed throughout the, the bouquet evenly um, because it has a different shape and a different texture. Um, but other than that, I'm just concerning myself with getting that nice cascading teardrop shape. And I'm using the orchids as my, my trailer, as my tail for the, the, um, the bouquet so I can get, like I said, that nice teardrop shape. I always talk about um, the different types of flowers, line flowers, focal flowers, filler flowers, and then there is uh, orchids. Oh, as you can see, my... I had a bouquet fall down, so I, I've got a cameo appearance from an orange flower there, and I'll just tuck that away. Um, but orchids kind of have their own category, and I, I'll do a, another video on that, how to work with tropical flowers. I feel like the, the white, um, oh my goodness, I think this is a Cymbidian orchid, um, or it might be a, a Phalaenopsis. I'm not quite sure, actually. I'm drawing a blank, but I, I feel like this particular orchid um, yields itself nicely to a traditional wedding bouquet. It kind of does like a crossover um, or like a dual duty where you have that touch of, of exotic, but it still looks traditional. So I, putting together my flowers here, um, one thing with the cascading bouquets, you'll find that the stems in the back um, will will be exposed. And, which is fine. Um, you can always leave them exposed, but I feel like it makes a better bouquet if you cover up those stems, um, kind of keeping the, the secret safe. Although nobody really sees it looking at the front of the bouquet, whoever's carrying the bouquet is going to see it. And you want them to be confident carrying it, knowing that they're carrying a nice sturdy bouquet that looks good from the front, the side, and the back. And plus, I want to keep my secrets safe. I don't want anybody knowing how I assembled that bouquet. Um, 
and then that way they keep their focus on the bouquet itself. <clears throat> so even though I prepped up a lot of greenery, I'm only using a little bit. Um, I, I just use a couple of stems of that uh, nice flowy um, greens. Uh, I did wire up a few of the vernaculus leaves because uh, it has a, a nice kind of minty green to it. And I kind of worked that around the base. And then here at the end, I'm going to take those bigger hydrangea leaves and I'm going to go real low uh, to the base in the back. So you don't quite see it in the front, but I want to cover up those wires. And I didn't say, but as I assembled that bouquet, all these stems are pointing in the same direction. So it kind of runs like a clockwork. None of those stems are crossing that are in my hand. They are all going in a spiral. And I apologize, I should have shown that at the end there. Um, but that way, all the stems are pointing back at the same spot, the same direction. And there's not a co contrast of two stems going in opposite directions. Hopefully that made sense. I think if you're doing this yourself, you'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and then I just tie it off with a um, chenille stem or a pipe cleaner making sure that's a nice tight grip. I will uh, cover that with the wax floral tape and then I will do a stem wrap on the stem. But for now, there is a cascading hand-tied bouquet using monochromatic colors. Thank you so much for watching.